it is. Um, all right. point T and then D is the reflection of A over OH okay H. Um, maybe this won't be as easy as it looks. So you're reflecting over OH. Um, okay, so so this this is going to lie on the circle by symmetry, um, and we have a kite. So A B O H is like a kite. Um, See if I can draw it good. That looks kind of good. Um, and R is the reflection of T over BC. I'm assuming that's what that means. Should be R. Okay. So we have a rhombus then. So R. R, B, C, T is a rhombus. We have a rhombus and a kite. Um, and T, D intersect A, B, C is E. So then we have a harmonic quadrilateral, uh, E, D, D, C. And we want to show E, A, and R are collinear. That's interesting. All right, I like this problem. We have like a rhombus and a kite and a harmonic quadrilateral. And yeah, I can draw that kite if I want. I don't know if that just makes it harder than it needs to be. I'll just get rid of that. I'll try the midpoint of BC. So if that's if if E B D C is harmonic, let's say we project it through A onto I was gonna say O T. Maybe there's a better way to do it. Okay. I mean, there's a couple ways we could do this. We could also define R this way and then try to show R like we try to show R G equals R T. But I'll just move it back the other way for now.
One sec, please. Be right back. All right, let's, thanks for waiting. Let's see what time it is. Almost halfway through. I like the idea of using this, that this is a harmonic quadrilateral and then projecting, using projections on it somehow. Like what if we projected through R? So, um, and we try to show, We want to show E goes to A and C you know where B and C would go. So really yeah, we, we can use the fact that um E B D C is a harmonic what to to uh, prove this one. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, I have proven it. So uh, I'm gonna use a lemma. Okay. When you let uh, CR meets AB at uh, X and BR meets AC at Y. Mm -hmm. Oh, we, we already have that, okay. So this is X, this is Y. And uh, you let uh, AD meets BC at, at uh, Z. Okay, hold on just a second. So the problem is equivalent to saying that um, X, Y, Z are collinear. Um, and is that because after we project through A, or let me think about yeah. that? Okay. Yeah, projecting through A. And if we have X, Y, Z are collinear, then projecting through A, we will have um, E, A, and R is collinear. Okay. So um, to prove that, uh, so we're going to redefine Z as the intersection of X, Y, and B, C, then we're going to prove that A, Z is perpendicular to O, H. Okay. And um, this is a lemma that I have done before, and uh, we're going to use uh, the inversion through the circle with diameter B, C to prove this. Interesting. Okay. Circle with diameter B, C. Okay. So, so you want to show, basically, we want to define Z like this um, 
and then we'll show that AZ is perpendicular to OH. Um, we, we want to prove that um, when, when you do an inversion, so um, we're going to have AZ transform into a circle and also OH transform into another one. And we need to prove that um, the two circles are actually orthogonal to each other. Then uh, by that fact, AZ and OH will be uh, perpendicular. Okay. All right. So we invert about we invert about the circle with diameter BC. And you want to show that, so OH inverts to a circle, or line OH inverts to a circle, line AZ inverts to a circle. And you want to show that those circles are orthogonal. All right. Sounds interesting. I do not think I would have had this idea, but it sounds very interesting. Yeah, it, it surprised me too because um, actually R can be any point on the perpendicular bisector of BC and uh, the problem will be still true by inversion. Wait, if R... So so how could that be? So, so you're saying R can um, be any point on the perpendicular bisector of BC? Uh, I'm sorry, um, if R is... Um, any point on um, perpendicular of B, bisector of BC, then O must be the uh, the ortho center of BRC. Okay, and, uh, interesting. And then, yeah, I, I often call it the double ortho center lemma because O and H are the uh, ortho center of ABC and RBC. Yeah. And, uh, X, Y will be perpendicular to uh, that line. Interesting. The double yeah, ortho center lemma. Can we generalize this uh, to R not being on the perpendicular bisector? Have you tried that before? I'm sorry? Uh, have you tried before uh, generalizing this uh, to R not being on the perpendicular bisector? Mm, I don't really remember, but I think inversion can solve it. Hmm. But um, yeah, it's a little complicated, so maybe you guys uh, should check for me. Okay. All right. So, but basically, it's like you have two triangles, ABC and RBC, and you take the ortho center of each, but RBC has to be isosceles for this lemma to work, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Interesting. All right. So, um, let's see. So, I'm trying to see. So, um, what would OH invert to under that inversion? So, O, um, let's see. Reflect about circle. That's going to go to that. So O goes to R basically because GO times, let's think about that. GO times GR is GB squared. Um, yeah. Okay, because that's the order of the center. So, um, or actually, is that that odd? Well, yeah, because that's the same as saying OBG is similar to GBR. Um, and I think that's obvious. Yeah, okay. So, OH inverts to, O inverts to R. Um, H, what is H invert to? This point right here, which is, um, what do you call that? The Q point. So we have the circumcircle G I R. Um, and then if 
So that's that circle. Um, and then for AZ, this is tricky. Oops, sorry. What does Z invert to? Z must invert to a point really far away. Um, yeah, when you let AR meet BC at a point, then um, Z will be inverted to that point by oh. um, harmonic conjugation. Okay. And then A, let's see where A inverts to. A prime. Is there anything special about where A inverts to? Um, it inverts to the uh, A Humpty point. The A Humpty point, okay. All right, this looks tricky. So, let's see. So I wanna let AR intersect BC, right? Okay. Um, let me make F, what is F? There's all these points that I don't know what they are. Okay, so let's make this look a little nicer. So um, basically we have A prime J, G. And we wanna show that those are orthogonal, right? Um, Oh wait, now, now it doesn't look like GH passes through that point. Hold on a second. hide this circle. Uh, any, um, let's see. So A inverts to A prime and Z inverts to J. Okay. Can you connect? Um, AZ? Uh, AZ, okay. All right, so we want to show that this and this are orthogonal, right? Um, do you know how to do that? Um, yeah, let me, see. uh, let's see. So it looks like these concur, right? Um, that might be helpful in proving it. And may maybe, maybe this is the, let's see. So I wonder what that intersection point inverts to. Well, it should invert to the intersection of OH and AZ. Yeah. I would have never, never thought of a solution, but it seems really interesting. Double orthocenter lemma. Yeah, I actually didn't think of um, inversion in first place, but um, like I because I was doing problems of inversion and this one just come up in the the set of the problem. So yeah, it's yeah. really weird, but.
It just happened to be something you could use. So yeah, we want to show those circles are orthogonal. I don't know too much about showing how to show circles are orthogonal other than, so that means angle LIM is 9, or yeah, that, that means angle LIM is 90, right? LIM and LGM. Um, we have HI is perpendicular to AJ. H I is perpendicular to A A J. Yeah, um, it is because of power of a point. When you let H meet uh, B C at a point. H I. Um, a H. Oh, okay. Um, then we have AH times AN is equal to AA prime times AG and is equal to AI times AJ. So we have HIJ must be 19 degree. Okay. 90 degree. So HIJ has to be 90 degrees. Um, and and ultimately we want to show LIM is 90 degrees, right? Um, so yeah, and that is equivalent to uh, proving IH passes through the uh, the intersection of circle G, I, R, and B, C. Uh, G, I, R? Okay. Yeah, the, so this yeah, part Oh yeah, you can just um, let IH meet uh, BC at P and then we will prove that P lies on that circle. Okay. And, uh, and I think it's just a power of a point. Okay. Like because we have, um, we have uh, cyclic quadrilaterals with um, 19 degree angles. So we're gonna have HP times HI. Yep. It is HA times HN which is um, HG times HK. Mm, interesting, because we know that's a right angle. Okay. All right, this is very, wow. I like, so, okay, so I'm gonna start writing this up, but that, that basically solves, the, well, so that proves that um, OH is perpendicular to AZ, which ultimately solves the problem. Okay, so, um, all right, let me think about this. So, so we, we redefine things a bit here. So, okay, so we let BA intersect CRX and we let BR intersect XZ um, AC at Y. And then we let x, y meet it at z. Okay, so 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 we're we're basically working backwards. Um, and then we showed that a z is perpendicular to oh. So then z equals d. Um, okay, and then. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, so, 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 so basically we let AR intersect the circle at E prime. Okay, I'm, I'm just thinking about how to type this up. So, so AR intersects the circle at E prime, and then E prime T intersects it at D. 
Um, and then we show that D is actually, or, or, or we could call it D prime. Um, and then we end up showing D prime equals D. That, that's kind of how we solve it, right? Mm, yeah, but um, you don't actually have to call out all the phantom points. Actually, you just need to call Z prime. Okay. Because if we can prove that Z prime is the same as Z, we will have um, AX, AY, AR, and uh, AZ uh, is harmonic. However, AX, AY, and AE, AZ also is harmonic. So we have ARE is collinear. Okay, so we just really need like a Z prime kind of. Um, but yeah, we could just call it Z. Okay, so, okay, so I'll type this up. Um, let A, B intersect C, R, at X. Z equal like this. Okay. Um, so what was the double, what did the double orthocenter lemma say? So, 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 so is that, is that, is that the proof? That's the proof that AZ is perpendicular to OH. That, that is the double orthocenter lemma, right? Yeah, it, it states that um, we let ABC be a triangle and um, let R be an arbitrary point on the perpendicular bisector of BC yeah. and uh, O be the, uh, let O be the orthocenter of RBC. Uh -huh. Then we let um, BR, CR meets uh, ACAB at X and Y. Yeah. Then we have uh, let Z be the intersection of X, Y, and BC, then uh, AZ is perpendicular to uh, OH. Okay. All right. So, um, so, so most of what we did was a proof of that fact. Um, and then once you prove that fact, it solves the problem because you could take X, what um, was it RX, RA, RY, R, or, or AX, AR, AY, Z? I forgot. Yeah, A X A R A Y. Yeah, A X A R A Y Z. Okay. So, so okay. So we, we know that E B D C is harmonic. And then we project that through A. Um, so then we get X. Okay. We define R first. Then O is the fourth and center. Yeah, okay. So, um, so this means that if we project on X, Y, Z, then X, this point, Y, and Z would be harmonic. Oh yeah, perpendicular lines invert to orthogonal circles. That, that that's one thing. Yeah, that's one thing I knew that Stefan didn't know. So I can be happy about that at least. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So sorry. So we take E, B, D, C, and we project it onto the line X, Y, Z, right? Um, 
So V goes to Z and B and C go into X and Y. Um, but, okay, so Q, okay, we could draw a point Q. So that means that uh, projecting through A, a we get X, uh, Z, Q, I'll just write it like this. So through A onto X, Y, then we have basically X, Y, Q, and X, Y intersect B, C, it's harmonic. And then and then we could show that x, y, q, z is harmonic. So then that would prove basically what we want to prove. Or x, y, q, and a. Oh, I should say a, b intersect b, c. And then I'll show X, Y, Q, Z. Okay. Okay, so if I could show X, Y, Q, Z is harmonic, then that would solve it. But wait, so why is that? Is that obvious? Because wait, what am I missing? Well, well, it is obvious that X, Y, Q, Z is harmonic, but then we just need to show that A, Z is perpendicular to OH. Okay. Um, so <laughs> Sorry, the chat I'm sure is like, oh yeah. But, but let's see, so we showed that, so AR and BC, okay, so I, I mean, we, we know that X, Y, Q, Z is harmonic, so. This is so is confusing me so much. So okay. So now we just have to show that A Z is perpendicular to O H, and that's where we do the inversion. Okay, so invert about the circle with diameter BC. Um, so line OH goes to the circle um RKG and line AZ inverts the circle A prime GJ. So let's let's try to prove some of this stuff. So so G O um, we want to show G O times G R is G B squared, and that's true. Um, that's not too hard to show because O is the orthocenter of of R B C. So 
Um, and then H inverting to K. Um, I, I'm not even going to prove this for now. I'll just I'll just state this as a fact. Um, I think it's not too hard to prove. Um, a Z. So so A inverts. So this is where A prime is the dumpy point. The A dumpy point. That's like a well-known fact. Um, it's actually the A Humpty point. Like the oh, Humpty point is another one. Sorry. Um, the A Humpty point. Because yeah, B H A prime C is cyclic. Um, and so, um, and a prime lies on the circle with diameter a h. So yeah, if you use power of a point, um, I'm guessing there's probably a way. Well, yeah, because we know, because we know a k h a prime is cyclic, so that's a right angle. So yeah, um, and then g goes to the intersection. So so. J is the intersection of BC and AR. Um, how do we know Z inverts to, how do we know Z inverts to uh, J? Um, it is because um, we have B, C, Z, J is a, a harmonic conjugation. Oh, okay. And, uh, G is, G is the point, yeah. So, all right, I like this. Implies Z inverts to J. Since G is the midpoint of BC. Okay. And once we know that, then we want to show these two circles are orthogonal. Um, and so, Stefan, I, Stefan, you said it's just like an angle chase. So, 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 so Khan, you were saying angle H, I. J is 90, um, and we can- It's an angle trace to prove that L-I-H is M-I-J. L-I-H is that would just imply that. Okay. So first, first we'll try to show that H-I is perpendicular. So, so let H-I intersect B C of P. Um, and then, Wait, how do we define I? I is I where, yeah, how do we define I? Is it where the circle meets AJ? Um, you can let I be the, uh, the feet of the foot of perpendicular from H onto um, AJ. Okay. So, All right. And then let HI intersect B, C at P.
and basically we want to show p g i r is cyclic and that's that's kind of obvious by right angles right but but then we want to show k lies on that um is that obvious that k lies on it oh that's power of a point i think you were saying right yeah yeah it's just power of a point okay so this this means that and then by power of a point we can show that k also lies on it because hg times hk um i mean basically So like, I know that this, like right here is cyclic, um, but so yeah, how, how do we know, well, how do we get G, HG times HK? Um, HG times HK is, um, is equal to HA times HM. Oh, that's right. It is because, yeah, because of the perpendicular. Yeah. HG times HK is HA times HN, um, which is HI times HP. So that means that PGIH are cyclic. Or, or PG, sorry, PGIKR. Um, and once we know that, um, that then it's kind of an angle chase to prove that the circles are orthogonal. Okay, so. here so okay so we want to show lih equals mij um and that okay so lip and it that's the same as showing trials lip and mij are similar and let's see maybe that's easy um because angle imj is twice angle igj um and angle LIP is twice angle IRP. So can we show angle IRP is IGJ? Oh, that, oh, that, yeah. Okay, so that's an easy angle to, yeah. So, so angle MIJ is half of angle, um, oh no, I'm sorry, twice. Angle IMJ is twice angle IGJ. Which is twice angle IRB. I think that's IRB. Sorry, IRP, which is angle off. Just angle ILP. That means that 
angle MIJ is LIP. And that implies angle LI M is 90. And that means that the circles RKG is orthogonal to A prime GJ. That implies that um, AZ is perpendicular to OH. And that um, implies A. Z passes through D. Passes through D. And that implies EA and R are collinear. Took me a while to understand, but it's very, very cool. All right. See what this looks like. It fits. <laughs> like it. All right. So thanks for the solution. Uh, I learned something new this double orthocenter lemma. All right. So for the next one, um, let's try. So we could do a middle riddle. Um, here's a 60 degree angle problem if you like those. Um, yeah, let's do that one. Okay. Uh, this one was actually kind of interesting, but yeah, let's try yeah, this. Can you fix that parallel symbol? Like, it looks mad. <laughs> or what? Oh, we're doing this problem, right? Yeah. Okay, fine. I thought for the other one. No, man. Oh, okay. Uh, there we go. So it's a 60 degree angle. Um, sometimes I'll just do it like this. For a really long one, use the rotate. Uh, say about this point, 60. And let's call this C. But yeah, I, 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 for some reason, I like it better. I like it when this is shorter. So Call well, this one B and this one C. And this one just A. Maybe I'll, I'll do hide name. Show label. Hmm. Oh well, we'll just look at it as A prime. Um, it has a short solution with complex numbers. Interesting. Even though it's like a, it looks like a, a kind of long problem, I guess complex numbers just makes it makes it easier. All right, so let's do this. Hmm. Okay, I'll just zoom a little bit. I think that looks okay. And I is the inner circle. And Z, okay. I think they mean that I is in center, probably. Uh, I is in center. Yeah, I'll just draw the inner circle. Um, so, Z lies on AB so that ZA equals ZI. 
to each other for mixer bisector. Is that is it tangent? Is this line tangent to the circle? Let's see. It looks not always. Not always. Okay. Oh, maybe they, it might be true in the case like when BAC is sixty. Yeah, like like when it's sixty degrees, I think maybe it is uh, like a special case where it's it is tangent. I'll have to think about that, but yeah, maybe we can prove that it's tangent in that situation. Uh, U lies on. So yeah, for, for the time being, I'll just draw this this line, which I think we might be able to prove. Um, I think it might just be an angle chase because. Like if, if we draw this perpendicular bisector, then this is an equilateral triangle and maybe it's just like an angle chase to show that it's tangent. Um, uh, how do you show AZD equilateral? Is what? AZD. AZD? Well, because yeah. th so this is 60 degrees by the question, right? So if we draw um, like a perpendicular bisector of AI and we see where it hits both of these sides, an AZD has to be uh, uh, equilateral, right? Oh, well, in that case, I think a uh, tangency is obvious because, like, you have. Wait, is it obvious? Oh, never mind. I fixed it. Okay. It could, yeah. All right, and then U lies on BC so that 2BU equals UC. Okay, so we have to cut this in three. Um, I would do that by dilate. Dilate. Well, okay. To dilate okay. by one third. So we dilate this by one third. Let's see if I can just do a fraction. All right. So this is U. And we want to show that twice angle BZU is equal to angle ABC. So in this case, we measure some angles. BZU is 36.7. And Z, whoops, this angle should be like 73.4, maybe. Yeah, so it's true. All right. Does AI equal twice the radius when A equals 60 degrees? Yeah, that would prove the tangency. Um, so yeah, this is, well, yeah, okay, it's obvious because this is a 30 degree angle, right? So this is a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. And so AI would be twice the radius and then that proves that your tangent. Yeah, so this is this is tangent. All right. Okay, so if we let bi cap zu be like some point. Okay. Bi intersects zd. Uh, zu, not zd. Okay. All right. Uh, then we just have to prove that that triangle is isosceles with B and Z. Like let it be X, then X, B, Z should be isosceles. Yeah, because this is an angle bisector. That's a good point. Or maybe even like if we want to use POP somehow, we can show that Z, B should be tangent to B, F, U. We can show either things. Um. Hold on one sec. I thought this. I thought maybe this triangle is isosceles, but I don't think so. Um, yeah, that's not isosceles. Sorry, what were you saying? Oh, uh, like alternatively, we can also show that ZB tangent to BFU. Oh, that is tangent. Yeah, like we can show either of the two things. Okay. Wait, it's not. Uh, 
a sec. I'll be right back. Sorry. All right, thanks for waiting. Uh, BU is tangent to, oh, BU is tangent to BFC. Yeah, all right. So yeah, we can show that one also. Yeah, let me move the figure around so it doesn't look like U is the point of tangency. Um, kind of like that, that looks better. All right. Maybe there's some congruent triangles here or something. Like, I don't know, maybe triangle FCE is congruent. Um, let me check if that's actually true. It's Yeah, I bet there's a way to, well, actually, maybe not. Uh, maybe construct like uh, a reflection of line BZ over ZU. So that like angle, that thing should be equal to ZBC. Um, reflect that line. And then we can maybe see where it meets BC or some other. Something yeah. Else. It's like this would be isosceles.
can you run AG? Like, maybe that passes so nice now. AG? Yeah, okay, it's not really a nice one. To find. Um, unless you and I are pulling north at that point. Oh, right. But, no, I don't think so. Can G somehow be like the extra point? G is like what? Like it somewhat looks like the X touch point. Like, okay, yeah, maybe like Yeah. You can like, take that from the left. Okay, that's all right. Yeah, that's hmm. yeah, no, it looked like it, but yeah, it's, it's not introduce good. midpoint of C U. C U. Now, ZU is parallel to DH. Okay. Um, I don't know how, I just noticed it. I think it's good because E is the midpoint of ZD. And basically, if we take the midpoint of UH, that's going to be the midpoint of BC. Um, and so, yeah, but then we'd have to show that's parallel. Hmm. Yeah, that's very interesting. You, you just need to call the midpoint of BC uh, as M. Then when you let the line through D parallel to ZU meets BC at H, then we will have MU equals MH. And it is the same as saying um, HC is equal to BU. So um, yeah, H is the midpoint of CU. Okay, so, so basically, you define this to be parallel, and then you prove that H is a midpoint of CU. So, oh. sorry, say it one more time. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, that's all right. Okay, so H, we're defining it to be parallel. Um, and then okay, parallel to ZU. Yeah. Okay. And then if M is the midpoint, we know that this is going to also be parallel, right? Um, okay. And then it follows from that. Uh, how do we know that ZU is parallel to VM? Uh, ZU is parallel to EM. Yeah. Um, so, Wait, actually, my proof. Um, yeah, we didn't know that M is midpoint of HU, so. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. Maybe that, that doesn't work. I'm not sure. Uh, can, you, can you check that uh, actually? Do we know that Z use parallel to DH? Like, is it really true? Let's see. Uh, I think it is. It should be true by symmetry, right? Uh, why is it true? I mean, like, uh, I do not have a, that, that's not a proof, but like, it seems to be true because like, uh, BU equals CH and then Z and D and like the tangency point. So like, Everything is some sense symmetric. So that's where, like, that's not really a proof, but like intuition, maybe. Okay. Because so these are like intersections of tangents. Um, but would it be true if this wasn't 60 degrees? I'm not sure. Well, probably not. Okay. Um,
Or can you check what's the angle bisector of DZU? Uh, this? Oh no, D. Um, DZU. DZU. Oh, fine. I thought it would be like ZG. Oh, okay. It is interesting that these are parallel. Let's see. So yeah, if these are parallel. Uh, and this is 120 minus this. Yeah, there must just be some kind of trick or something. I'm going to delete point G for now, but we can add that back in later if we want it. There we go. <laughs> okay. Good time it is. Um so yeah, we want to use that. Yeah, H is the midpoint of U C, and then we want to try to use symmetry if possible. Um, yeah, I don't know if adding the X touch point helps or not. Um, but yeah, so this is a rhombus right here. Um, okay, I have angle traced uh, a bit, and I think the problem is equivalent to showing the following okay. angle MED. Is equal to 180 minus B minus uh, C half. Uh, 180 minus B minus half of C. Yeah. And B and C add up to 120. So we could even. Yeah, we can like. Uh, minus. That would be something. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, I think that will be 120 minus B by 2. 120 minus B over two. So yeah, so that, so these angles would add up to 120. Uh, MEV. This would be then 60 plus C over two. Just check that if that is uh, true. So let's see, do 
Is E set up? Uh, C over 2, not B. Oh, uh, so those add up to 120. So I think, it, but then it should also be 60 plus that. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, that is true. So we have to show that there is this long angle chase, which uh, for the finish, if we know, knew that. For, for angle A. Oh, the parallel thing for angle chase. What? Uh, did you use the fact that ZU parallel DH parallel N? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think this is easy to prove, right? The parallel? Yeah. How do you prove parallel? Uh, let me just think. Hmm. I did use the, that uh, it is parallel, but Huh. Um, is it that obvious? Yeah, like it looks to be very true, but I don't see it. Yeah. Uh, so, like, essentially, that parallel thing is saying that if you have any quadrilateral which has an in circle, such that two opposite sides are equal, and like the top angles are like one twenty degrees, then you have this parallel thing. Like BZ equals to DC, right? Uh, BZ equals DC. That's I don't think that's sure. B BZ looks shorter than DC, I think. Oh, fine. Yeah, no, no, no. That's all right. Yeah. I assumed we have that AZ is equal to AD. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. AZ is equal to AD. But it's interesting. This looks like so obvious yet. <laughs> Don't know how to prove it. Yeah, I agree. Um, Stefan, can you? Can you restate the uh, angle chase again? Uh, okay, what but uh, you just need to, uh, Michael, you just need to add one more point for this angle chase. Okay. I mean, it's not just one angle chase, it is a bit more involved, but okay. So uh, draw the circle through F and FB radius. F with radius of B. Yeah. And intersect that with BC. Okay. Oops. The yeah, other point's going to be G. Okay. Um, now delete the circle. I mean, hide it. Okay. So G would be like uh, a point on BC, which is uh, such that BG is equal to BZ. And by symmetry, then FZ is equal to FG. So we want to show that F is the circumcenter of uh, ZBG. And I thought about that with angle tracing. So we would want to show that angle GZF is 90 minus angle B. Okay. Uh, and F is actually like not important now. You just take GZU. Okay. Okay, and I will uh, just uh, write the angle chase in chat, but I have to. Um, um, uh, you can to... just uh, tell me like the final one. Like, what do we need to prove? Uh, we need to prove that MED, angle MED, is equal to uh, 60 degrees plus angle C half.
So it looks like I is actually the circumcenter. Yeah, that is that is a trivial. You just have that I Z is equal to I D and uh, and I G. Yeah. yeah, I Z. So Han, did you do you know what we need to prove? Angle M E D is angle C over two plus sixty. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, I will write the angle trace in chat just so you know what I did. All right. Thanks. All right, easy. Yeah, I wonder if there's a way to bash it with trig. I'm just thinking in my head. Like if we know Z U and DH are parallel, then like sine B Z U over B U is sine Z U B over Z B. And then sine D H C over D C is sine um sine C over D H. And the sine of these two would be the same if they were parallel. Um Well, actually, if, if we know these are these two are parallel, then the ratio of the signs of BZU and CDH is the ratio of the socks of the segment BZ and CD. So I don't know if that helps. Okay, so there's the angle chase. Angle UZG. UZE is MED. UZE. Okay.
Okay. Well, yeah, as long as the first one is used, he, he, Wait, so, something is, yeah, because. All right. So I wonder, what if we draw you D? Are these triangles similar? Let's check. It almost looks like it, right? Oh, I don't, no, I don't think they are, but let's check. UDH and BZU. Yeah, they're not similar. I think this could be done like really straightforward with uh, trigonometry. Oh, yeah. So, and, like, you just have to find, uh, you know, if you're searching for like uh, z over, b, uh, yeah, z over b, it has to be one over two cosine uh, b half. And from that, like, uh, you can just square that. And you can find the uh, zero from a cosine theorem. Okay. And in, I, I have some calculations here, but it looks like it, it can be done. Okay, so, so, Z, so how would you find, okay, so I, I guess, so, like like are you are you kind of working backwards like you start out like what if this was true and then you work backwards or are you starting just using for that to be true you have to prove that bu over zu is one over two cos in uh, b half okay bu over zu is one over two cosine b halves okay yeah yeah, yeah because this would uh, yeah okay and now I just, I will see, I have. So yeah, how do you find the ZU though? That's where I think it's a little tricky. I mean, if you square, if you're searching for ZU squared, like you can find it just by cosine theorem on BUZ. BUZ. Because you have B when you have BZ, BZ is uh, C minus R root. Yeah, it's A, B minus A, Z. Um, so you can kind of do it from there. Yeah, so I, yeah, it can be bashed. Um, let's see. Maybe it's. Let's think about it.
maybe there's some other cyclic quadrilateral here is, let's see if this is cyclic. No. But yeah, I, I feel like when you have a 60 degree triangle like this, there's something cyclic. So angle BIC is 120. Um, let me draw the uh, Yeah, we have BIOC is cyclic, where O is the uh, circumcenter. Yeah. I don't know if that helps. Um, but yeah, let, let me try to write out the the cos the law of sines and law of cosines that Marco mentioned. Um, see where that gets us. Let's see. And yeah, so sorry, before I do that, like if we take the midpoint of this arc, then yeah, it's equidistant from B, I, O, all these, yeah, line a circle. I just don't know if that does much. All right, let me, let me see if I can write out the, the trig bash that um, Marco mentioned. So, Sign So Marco, did you use the half angle formula in trig or did you use the double angle formula? Uh, first I used the dub double angle formula to get the to one over two cosine beta. And then uh, I transformed that when I squared, I transferred uh, cosine, cosine square uh, beta half into two uh, four cosine square bit half into two plus two cosines beta This looks kind of messy, but yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm having a little trouble with it. Sorry. Um, but yeah, if you figure it out, you can type it up in a chat. I'll put it here, but um, yeah. Yeah, there has to be a synthetic solution, I'm sure.
Yeah, because this is this is like a rhombus right here, and then this is all like symmetric, and then it passes through O. It feels like a lot of information. Um, so maybe we could take A, B, C, okay, B, Z, U. Is there anything else we can say about point Z? What if uh, I see where I try to let Z, U intersect this circle? I wonder if Z, U, and A, J meet on the circle. That would be nice, although I'm not sure it's actually true. No. That is not true. Almost looks like those meet on the circle, but I don't think that's true in general. Yeah. Oh, it looks like it looks like L M and D H meet on this circle. <laughs> I don't know if that's just a coincidence. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? L, M, and D, H meet on this circle right here. Is that true? Yeah, it looks true. Yeah, interesting. I don't know if that helps too much, but it, maybe it's obvious because, let's see. Oh, because these circles, are these circles reflections over B, C? Yeah, yeah, okay. they are. Okay, so then that because point... like H also lies over, of, on this circle. So, like BHC is obviously a reflection of ABC, right? Yeah. So this is also. All right. But even if it's a reflection, that how does uh uh that lie? Uh, this. Yeah. So like so like L M if, if Z L H T and E M are parallel, then L M equals L M N. Oh, that is assuming parallel, right? Yeah. Yeah, fine. Also is N midpoint of D H. Um let's see. No. That's absurd. Oh, uh, I feel that maybe like we can show element to be collinear without parallel condition. Like that would imply parallel, right? Okay. I don't see what. How, how would you show how would you show that without knowing the parallel conditioning condition? Yeah, I'm not exactly sure, but it's some something of the sort like, you know, the ratio like BU equals CH and AZ equals AD. So maybe like you somehow involve ratios. Okay. I'm not exactly sure. Interesting. Or maybe I N is is I N parallel to B C. That is unlikely. Um, Wait, let's see. I think it's true. So so basically, maybe, maybe. I think. I wonder if I and L are reflections across BC. Um, oh, no, it's not true. Yeah, you're right.
Oh, is LN parallel to DU? Uh, LN and DU. Um, no. Oh, very Hello. close. Let's try something. So. Circles we can use. Hmm. This is tricky. Maybe it's worth trying like this point. Uh, also, I think the two circles, B, I, C, and A, B, C, the reflection of each other over M, right? Yes. So, yeah, the reflections, if you reflect both over B, C, you get the other. Okay, uh, sorry to interrupt, but I found something useful. Uh, Z, U passes through the midpoint of B, D. Interesting. So, Z, U bisects B, D. And it almost looks like they meet at a point right there. These, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete some of the stuff we added. So, um, sorry. Okay, so um, so Q is the midpoint of ZU, is what you're saying? That would be D. Q is the midpoint of BD. Yeah. And then it almost looked like there was. I don't remember what it was, but it looked like something incurred here. Oh, was it that's just the circle B I O C? Yeah, it looks like this point lies on that circle, but I don't know if that helps. Oh, that's not true. Okay. So yeah, that looks definitely useful. Um, if so, if we know B Q equals Q D. Um, well, well, if BQ equals QD, then that means ZU and DH are parallel, right? Because U is a midpoint of BH. So then we know that parallel thing that we want, that we're trying to show, right? How did you get that? That Q is a midpoint of BD? I don't get it, just found. Uh, All right, so it's 12 o'clock, so I think I'm going to stop here. Um, yeah, let me know if you guys figure this out after the session and, and have a solution. But yeah, this last one was a tricky one. Um, so yeah, we had a good group today and a lot of good solutions. So thanks, everyone, for participating. And for those of you watching on YouTube, thanks for watching. Uh, so if you want to join me in the future, uh, feel free to email us at m feel free to email me at mgreenv801 at gmail.com. Uh, it's in the description of my video. And we meet every Sunday at 8 a.m. U.S. Central Time. So thanks again and have a great day. See you next time.